It's Elizabeth. I hope y'all are doing well. Thanks for joining in. Okay, so what you see before you is some uh, watercolor stuff. And yeah, I thought I'd do another very simple tutorial on how to make this Gerber daisy. Uh, yeah, I showed this page. This is a page in my um, creative daily journal and right here and this was to document that my sweet uh, stepmother and father sent us a beautiful arrangement of flowers for Easter so that's how I chose to document it in my book got a lot of positive feedback from it and so I thought I'd come on and show you how I did it it's super duper easy okay now a little disclaimer I'm not a watercolorist. I don't play one on TV. I like to have fun, okay? I like to have fun. I like to try new things. So, if you've seen my past videos, okay, just uh, most recently, I did these really cute little galaxy paintings for my daughter's uh, students for her to send a little hello note. And then, um, I've also made, minus the Sharpie mark right there, I also made some of these little flowers in a jar for her class, uh, for her students as well. And they don't just have to be cards, you know. I mean, this I turned into a tag because this goes into my journal to, of course, document that on this day I painted these things, okay. In the past, I have done this, which is a layered, a very soft layered uh, watercolor card. Okay, so I've done that if you've seen any of those videos. Now, uh, the materials that I use, but you certainly do not have to use them. Uh, you can use any watercolors you want. Uh, I happen to use the Arteza 36 Watercolors Premium Pack. Uh, they're half pans and I absolutely love them. There are links below. Uh, I use, so those are going to go over there. I use this right here, okay? And it's Canson watercolor paper, 9 by 12, and it is 140 pound cold pressed paper, okay? Now, again, I'm not a colorist, a watercolorist, or anything like that by any stretch of the imagination, but what I do like to do is when people do give me feedback on um, things that I have painted and played around with, and or they ask for a tutorial, you know, of course I'm going to oblige. And one of the reasons is because I know, you know, a lot of people say that watercolor is very intimidating and it is. Again, I just like to play. I do not do like realistic looking um, flowers at all. Uh, I don't, you know, watercolor normally. Again, I just have playtime. And uh, yeah. And there are a lot of other professional watercolors here on YouTube that you can watch, okay? <laughs> but I like to show my process because um, I guess in my mind, if I can do it, y'all can do it, okay? <laughs> so I try to show a very simplified version, okay? And I was inspired by the Gerber Daisy, you know, the other day. And so I thought, you know what? I need, here is the flower bouquet. Isn't that beautiful? And there's the daisy right there. It's absolutely stunning. So that was my, there's a shadow from this lily here, there. That was my inspiration, okay? The beautiful flower arrangement from my stepmom and my dad. And uh, so what was I saying? Yeah, I like to show you guys super simple ways of doing things. Again, these aren't realistic. They're more whimsical than anything else. They're very flat. I have no idea how to do like shadows and highlights and low lights and all that kind of stuff. But I really did enjoy the way that this daisy came out. And so I'm gonna try to recreate it for y'all. And if you wanna follow along, go ahead. So what I have here is, uh, these are ready-made cards that I've cut from that big pad. And they are just a standard size card. So yeah, that's why I did, that's why I wanted to do this uh, as a tutorial as well, because I have, I want to, I don't have to. The Southern, the sweet Southern thing to do when you receive something is to send a thank you, 
always, okay? Send a thank you. So I want to send uh, my stepmom and my dad a thank you card, and I was going to be in here doing it anyway, so why not bring you along, okay? These cards I've cut down to eight inches across this, uh, you know, across this way and five and a half inches up, just a standard size card, Um and because it's whatever fits my envelopes, the envelopes that I have. And then I simply score it at four inches, fold it in half, and voila, you have a card. So let's just get started, okay? And hopefully I can do this in a timely manner. Um, and I hope you all enjoy this, okay? So I want you guys to be able to see everything. So let's see, yeah. Here's my water so you know like when I'm dipping and dabbing and all that kind of stuff. Here's my really, really colorful rag, because I know that's exciting, and my watercolor brushes. These are specifically watercolor brushes. Um, I know nothing about the sizes, but I'll tell you anyway, just in case you want to know. This one's a number five. This one's a number four. And I might use another one, a bigger one, but I, it's not looking like I'm seeing it. Let me see. Hmm. I don't know where it is. I have a whole set of these. Let me see. I can't even see what is on here. This is a size seven. Okay, so somewhere on my desk is a number six. Hmm. Oh, well. Okay, no big, no worries. Okay, so what I've taken is this uh, ball mason lid, okay? And I'm just going to put it right in the middle. Again, I do not do... I'm just eyeballing the middle. You know, I do not do realistic, I play, okay? I play. If I like the outcome of it, then I'll make multiple ones, okay? So there we have that, there's our circle. And then in the center, I'm just gonna eyeball it and make another, you know, little circle, okay? Because inside the Gerber Daisy, is uh you know the center part right and it start i'm looking at the flower now and it's it has yellow right in the center then it has i mean a multitude of petals that are orange with yellow tips and then it has some smaller petals around that that are a little bit darker in orange and then and reds and stuff like that and then the bigger petals are like this really deep red orange okay so we're just going to start out with this <clears throat> and see how it goes, okay? <laughs> oh, I hope, okay, see, I was using this right here. Okay, yeah, okay, so you can see the palette, the paints I use, everything. I do not, uh, just a tip for you, I do not uh, saturate my colors, okay? I use dry pan, I don't know if that's a technique or not, that's just the way I like to use them because when you use a dry palette, um, the colors come out a lot more deep. So that's what I want. But right now we're gonna do light washes to begin with, okay? So I'm taking my five brush. Yeah, I think the seven's gonna be too big. And I really, really wish that I could find the number six, but I'm not gonna waste your time. Well, maybe I will, I don't know. You know, fast forward to where I really start painting. Ah, oh, there it is. Okay, found it. I knew, I think this is a number six. Let me see, yeah, there's a number six. Okay, so we're gonna use that. So we've got a six, a, let me see here again. It's so hard to see these things. A six, a five, and a four, okay? So we're gonna use the six, okay? We're getting it, this is clean water. So we're putting our brush in here. And again, I am not worried about shadows, highlights, lowlights. This is completely just a whimsical, you know, um, painting, all right? I am squeegeeing it off and I'm gonna go right into here, okay? Now, on this first layer, I think, I am gonna do a bit of a wash. So I'm gonna put it over here into this pile. I'm gonna dip my brush and add more water so that it makes a big old puddle of red, orange, pink kind of pretty color. All right, now I am, now my brush is super, super thirsty, right? And I have to pull one of the bristles or something. Okay, and it's full of this red paint, right? I don't want it that thirsty. I don't want a lot of paint on it because what I'm trying to do is just a simple wash. And at the same time, I want these things to dry quickly, you know? I don't want them take forever. 
So we're dabbing it, okay? Let's see here. I want this water, okay. Let's scoot this over. Okay, this is how I did it, all right? Now, you're gonna start like in the center here on the outside of this uh, center circle, okay? You're gonna put the tip of your brush on, okay? You're gonna scoot it down just a little bit. My hands are shaky. Then you're gonna totally flatten it, okay? As you get to the outer circle, you're gonna lift it up and there you have it, okay? So that's it. That's all there is to it. Now, it pulls at the bottom there. If you want it to pull there, you can have it pull there in the center. Okay, so if you want it that way, you can do it that way as well, right? I don't like that there's so much paint there. So what I did was I dipped my um, brush onto my dirty rag, dried it off, and I can now suck up some of the paint, okay? Now I'm gonna go back into here, right? Into my puddle of red, and I'm gonna dab it. Now I'm gonna start from the outside in, I guess, because just by doing the first little petal, um, I want the pool to be on the inside, okay? So we're gonna go this way, I hope you can see this, and we're gonna do the same thing. I don't know how to, we're gonna go opposite too, and there there's a reason I do that. The reason I do that is because I wanna give this one here a chance to dry. So we're gonna go over here, we're gonna to touch it to the center circle, and then flatten out the brush, right? Move it toward the outside, lift it up as you get to the outside, okay? That's the total opposite of what I told you I was going to do because that is sometimes just the way that I roll. I do things and then I don't do them properly like I said I was going to. Okay, that's fine, no, no biggie, okay? We're gonna dip our brush into water, get some more of it on here, now remember, the more water you add to your petal here, the lighter your wash is gonna be, okay? So now we're gonna do this this way. We're gonna start at the outside. We're gonna flatten our brush and then bring it up to the center, okay? And then we're gonna do the same thing over here. We're gonna start it just a tad, flatten it out and bring it back, okay? And that's how you do it. That's how you do it, okay? Dipping my brush in, getting some more paint on it, okay? Using the same colors, all right? And then we're gonna go the opposite of these four spokes. See, this one right here is completely dry now. So a little bit later, I can go flatten it and then bring it back close. Well, that's kind of a flat one, whatever. It's, I mean, there's really no science to it. Although a true artist might say that there is, but for the purposes of what I'm doing, it doesn't really matter. All you need to know is that you start out at the, you know, at the center, right? With the tip of your brush, move it down maybe a little bit, then you flatten it, completely flatten it, and then you bring it back up at the end, right? Now, some of these are gonna be, they're gonna stay a little wet, which is fine, no big deal, okay. Now, to get the layered effect like I had in my book, okay, now we're just gonna go in between these, but I'm not gonna go near that one because it's still really wet, but um, we're gonna go in between these, flatten it, bring it to a point. Start at the tip, flatten it, bring it to a point and you're gonna start to see some overlapping going on okay tip flatten tip Ooh, my hands are terrible I haven't eaten flatten tip okay get some more paint on there dab it off okay these are dry over here so we're gonna start at the edge flatten it bring it back up. Now, some of these are darker than the others. No big deal. No big deal. As you get going and as these dry, the petals dry, dipping it in my puddle and taking most of the paint off on my rag, flatten it, bring it back up, okay? 
start at the top, flatten it, bring it back up, okay? And at, like I said, as you keep going, you know, you're going to start overlapping these colors, all right? Now, I want a little bit darker, right? The next one I want, the next layer, I should say, I want it to be a little bit darker. We're gonna add a little bit of water to this. Okay, so let's see how this works, shall we? You know what, I have my hair dryer here. Let me see if I can dry this real quick. Sorry for the noise. I think it should, you know, like lessen as it goes. And some of these, like this right here, is all pulling together because it was wet and it's spreading. No big deal. Because you're just going to keep adding layer upon layer upon layer. <clears throat> Excuse me. And you're going to go, you know, darker and darker and darker. And so it's not going to make a difference. Okay. I hope you heard me over that noise. All right. Let me see. Did I... Okay, now we're gonna do some darker ones. And you're just gonna go in between. See, like in between all of these. And as you build up your layers, you're gonna continue to go in between all the petals, you know? And then you'll, you'll see, I hope, I don't know. Okay, so we start out here. We go bloop, okay? And then we just go right over to the next one, right? Flatten it out bring it back in. Now, petals on a flower, they are not symmetrical at all. Start at the back, at the edge, flatten it out, and bring it up. Now, you, I mean, typically you wouldn't want these little pools right here to touch because then that's going to happen, this big blob. So we're going to try to stay away from that, but, you know, do the best you can. Do the best you can. Okay. So I got more paint in my puddle here, dabbing it off on here. And we're gonna go to the next one. Whoops, we're gonna start out here. Flatten it out, bring it in. Go right here. Flatten it out, bring it in. Now I'm trying not to get near that puddle. <laughs> I'm gonna go over here, flatten it out, Bring it in. Now, see, that's going to run together. I don't really care. I don't really care. Because like I said, this is all just, uh, where did I go? Okay, so now I'm going over here. Okay, I'm going to let this dry a little bit, so I'm just going to skip one. Right like that. Oh, you know what? Let's just do that. See, you learn something every time you do this. <laughs> well, I do anyway. And that's all it is, right? Oh, see, that's gonna gather together. Okay, you start at the, ed at the edge with the tip, flatten it, bring it back up as you get to the middle. Now, can you see the layers starting to happen, right? Oh gosh, I almost dropped my paintbrush. All right, so let's go, we'll go over here. Flatten it, bring it back up again. We can go here safely, flatten it, bring it back up. It's not perfect, okay? It's not meant to be perfect. That's why, that's one of the reasons I do not do realistic, okay? We're gonna give this a quick dry. And when you do a wash, usually it doesn't take very long to dry at all because you hardly, you're using hardly any water. I really hope you can hear me over my blow dryer. Okay, this might take longer than I thought, so stick with me or go ahead and fast forward. That's fine too, that's fine too. Okay, we're gonna even make it darker now, I think. Dab some off. And we're gonna pick a spot right here, flatten it, bring it back up, okay? Here's a spot here we can do. Careful not to touch that one, right? Here's a spot here we can do. Okay, here's a spot here we can do. 
I don't care that it's pooling at the tips and whatnot because like I said, you're just gonna keep adding layer upon layer upon layer. So it's, in my mind, it doesn't really matter. Start with the tip, flatten it, bring it closer. Here's an empty spot here. Start with the tip, flatten it, and then as you get to the other side, you bring it back up again. Start with the tip, flatten it, bring it back up. Okay, get some more paint. Here we can do one here. Flatten it, bring it back up. Let's do one here. Flatten it, bring it back up. Flatten it and bring it back up. Let's see, we could probably do one here. Flatten it and bring it back up. All right, now I'm gonna dry that layer. Really fast. Okay, and you're gonna go like this Continue, just continue making your petals, you know? That's all you do is you continue making your petals. Okay, let's do one more round, okay? We're gonna darken it up, okay? Well, this is more like a pinky color, but that's okay. We're gonna do that, and I'm gonna add a little bit of orange to it. Okay, to the puddle. So there's a little bit of orange added to it. And then I'm also gonna go rogue and add a little bit of brown just to darken it up a little bit, okay? Still got that reddish tint to it, but now it's a little bit darker. Okay, so let's see how that works out, shall we? All right. We're gonna just find a blank spot and you go, you can go right over them, you know? So flatten, go back up. And we're gonna scoot over here so we're not joining our pools. I'm gonna go here, flatten it, come right back up, right here, flatten it, come right back up. Let's go over here, flatten it. It doesn't have to be perfect. That's, I think, is one of the great things about watercolor, is it does not have to be perfect. Go here, flatten it, go back up. Go over here, flatten it, go back up. Here, flatten it, go back up. Here, and again, this is all just drying again this is all just whimsical so you're just adding layer upon layer upon layer and uh when you're doing this your your uh your layers you know because you're drying in between layers okay because you're drying in between layers it's they're not gonna mix see you can see all those individual layers right so cool so cool we're gonna go back to the red, I think, and we're gonna make really dark red ones. How about we try that? Okay, let's start at the edge. Oh, I didn't take enough paint off. Urgh. All right, no big deal. Start at the edge, flatten it, bring it back up. Start at the edge, flatten it, and bring it back up. We're gonna bring that around these puddles around because I don't like them like that. <laughs> sorry. I'm kind of mumbling. I'm sorry. Okay. And then, I mean, that is really, oh, flatten. Forgot to flatten. So you start at the edge, flatten it, bring it back up. Start at the edge, flatten it, bring it back up. It really is that simple. And then we just take a moment to dry. Sorry if this is loud. 
I think in most videos I see where people use a heat gun or a dryer, it, the sound kind of goes down as it goes, right? Ooh, this is taking a long time. I used, and it's taking a long time to dry, so that tells me one thing. I need to have a lot less paint on my brush or a lot less water on my brush. Get that dried up. Come on, dry spot, dry. I guess I should maybe, you know, um, invest in a heat tool, but probably not going to. Just saying. Okay, so I'm just dipping it in what was already there. And we're just going to keep, nope, I don't like that. Bunk. No big deal. I have too much water on my brush. Okay, sorry I got quiet. Again, I am not a professional. <laughs> I'm just showing you that it is super easy to just, you know, even if you don't watercolor often or if you are intimidated with watercolor, it's really not that hard, you know? Like, I'm not, obviously, I'm not going to be selling these anywhere, you know? I'm just sending them out. Like, I really don't like that. I can go in there and soften that up a little bit. Okay. See? Oh, I don't like that either. So you can go back in and just add some water and soften it up. No big deal. No big deal. Soften these up. Soften that up a little bit. Okay, now I think what I'm going to do is... Uh, okay, I'm going to switch brushes. This is going to be a really long video, and I'm really sorry for that. Okay, switching brushes to the next smaller one. Now, I would typically, and when I get off here, I'm going to add more layers, right? But um, let's just take this right here. No, you know what? I'm going to use the even smaller brush. Sorry. Okay, this is a number four, so I'm dipping it in the water, squeegeeing the water off the sides, dipping it right into that beautiful, beautiful red color. We're gonna take some of the ink off, okay? Now I'm gonna do little petals right in the center, and we're gonna do the same thing. Flatten it, just smaller, that's really all. Start, flatten it, lift it up. Start, flatten it, lift it up. I hope you can see what I'm doing. Start, flatten it, lift it up. Start, flatten it, lift it up. Start, flatten it, lift it up. Okay? Start, flatten it, lift it up. All right? You're going to do that all the way around in various colors if you want. And it's just, seriously, you take your brush like this, right? Put it on the tip, flatten it out, and then like that. Okay? So again, start with the tip. Well, my hands are shaky. Start with the tip, flatten it out, bring it back up. And there's a petal. Start with the tip, flatten it out, bring it back up. And no, whoops, bring it back up to hopefully a point. Okay, no two are the same, just like in nature. This isn't, okay, that's a bad one. Okay, start with the tip, flatten it out, bring it up, okay? All right, I hope that helps you. Now, you're gonna do that all the way around in various colors, and you can still continue. I would continue, for me personally, I would continue to add layer upon layer upon layer upon layer, all right? Um, now the center part, I'm looking at the flower right now and it appears to me, well, you're going to keep going around with these tiny little petals, right? And you can feel free to use a smaller brush. All right. I'm going to get 
Oh, if I can move. Oh, okay. I'm going to get some smaller brushes here. Let's see. These might be a two and a one. Okay. No, that's a three. And I don't know what that is. And that's a two. Okay. A three and a two. All right. So we can use those as well. Right. Now, all I do for the center part, because I'm just trying to speed this along a little bit, all right? I'm dabbing, dabbing, going straight into the dry pot, okay? Dabbing, dabbing, okay? I'm just going to make little dots, okay? Little dots for the center of the flower, okay? You're now you you're gonna let that dry and then you're gonna keep adding more layers. Okay, you're gonna keep adding more layers. And what I see on the flower that's sitting here right next to me is I do see some orange dots right along the edge. Okay, like tiny, tiny, tiny little dots. Right. The key to layering, all right, is letting the layers dry in between. Okay, so let's dry this up really fast, hopefully. <clears throat> and that is really just the key to the layered flower, is you have to have each layer dry between layers, you know? So if you have a heat gunner or a blow dryer, it is it goes a lot faster. Otherwise, you just do a layer, set it aside, let it air dry, do another layer, set it aside, do you know, like that. Okay, I think that's semi-dry. Okay, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna wash off my brush here, okay? Dry it off. I'm gonna go to this orange here. And I'm, again, I use a dry palette. I do not saturate my palette at all. I don't know if that's the right thing to do or the wrong thing to do. I really don't care because I am just playing, okay? I'm just playing. And I do more layers around, okay? Now, I will let that dry and then I'll add more layers and I'll let that dry and I'll add more layers, okay? Including these layers around here, this secondary layer of like the darker ones. And then I'll even put more layers on these outer petals here, okay? Now, when I did, um, and that's pretty much it, okay? That's pretty much it. You just keep building it up, building it up, building it up, building it up, adding more layers, letting each layer dry in between. And um, that is what I did with this one here, right? And when I, and this is just on copy paper. This isn't even on watercolor paper. It's completely on copy paper. And I just continue to add layer upon layer, darker, 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 till I got it the way that I wanted to. But see if you'll notice here, because of the technique of putting the point down, flattening it out and bringing the point up again, you get these shapes of the petals coming out of the center of the flower. Okay, so this has gone on way long enough, okay? I did not finish this, but it will get finished. Like I said, I will continue to add layer upon layer upon layer, darkening, 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 and add a secondary layer of the smaller petals around here. Maybe even um, adding some even smaller petals right toward the center because that's what it looks like on the flower. And there you have it. Okay, very, very simple technique. Just make sure you let each layer dry in between so that they don't get all muddled together. If you'll notice, I'll bring this up closely. You can see how many layers there are already. You know, I mean, look at all those petals that we put down, right? Okay, and then we'll continue with this right here and it's just gonna come out beautifully once all of the different layers are in there. Yep. So I hope this helped you out. I hope, you know, it gives you a, a fun idea to do on your own. Um, I, you can also erase this thing later, that um, pencil mark, or you don't need to use one at all. Do what you want. But yeah, I hope it gave you just, you know, some confidence that 
You don't need to be an artist. You don't need to be a watercolorist. You could just have playtime. Just have playtime. You don't need any specific kind of watercolor. Any watercolor will work. The more water you add to your pool, the lighter your wash is going to be. The more you use it straight from the palette, obviously, the darker it's going to be. So, yeah. The only thing I can tell you is just to make sure that you let the layers dry in between, okay? Because that's going to give you this whole beautiful layered effect, okay? So, I hope you enjoy that and thanks for sticking it out with me. And, uh, yeah, uh, leave a comment below. Let me know that you stopped by and uh, have a great rest of your day. Have a wonderful week, and I'll talk to y'all real soon. Bye for now.